Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. In this Invest Arms Gamer Hawken video, we're going to start shaping the forestock and talk a little bit about working around our wedge plates as well as our nose cap and our entry pipe. These are some interesting details, I think, especially if you're trying to take your kit to the next level. Uh, removing some of these points of wood that we're going to show here in the video really take this from being an off-the-shelf kit to a much more personalized muzzleloader. So if that's your goal, I think you're going to enjoy this video. We're going to get right to the chase here. Thank you again for watching. Full disclosure, I want to say muzzlers.com did give me a discount on the kit that we're using in this video, but that is not by any means affecting my commentary about the kit. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments below this video or shoot me an email. I prefer the comments though, uh, if anybody has any questions, especially about this particular aspect, because I can answer them publicly and transparently. As we start heading up to the forestock here, after we have kind of around our lock mortise and things roughed in, I want to talk about... Um, getting this hardware put in, and especially these, these uh, barrel tenon plates. Um, it's important at this stage, because we're going to be filing and sanding, that we try to get these to be um, uniform and we keep track of them. So what I've done, this is my right hand side, and you can see in the inlet there, I've marked one and I've marked two. And then on each of my plates, I've marked R1 and R2. This is so I can keep track of these um, as I'm putting them in and taking them out. And I'm making special note to make sure that my orientation is the same, meaning that this way is up uh, on these plates so that they're correct as the letters and numbers sit. And I'm doing that for both sides, marking these, because what we want to do is screw these in here so that we can um, we can clean up this forestock and get it the, get the forestock nice and even with our kit. They're pretty tiny screws, so I'll try not to lose them. On these, we're going to put in both screws on both sides on both plates, just because um, we want these to be nice and level, or as level as they're going to get um, as we match them to the stock. I had to get out a 330 seconds by 2 inch um, flathead screwdriver for these tiny screws in case you're building at home. That's what you want to look for. I'm not going to go over laying this out for the left hand side. It's the same on both sides. So I'm just going to show you what I'm doing here for the first side. And then I'm going to work through the other side off camera. I think on this kit, you know, I understand the use of these small screws. Um, you don't need a big screw out here, but um, it would be nice to have just a little bit bigger, I think, at least for when you're just working on it. I mean, out in the field, it's going to be rare that you need to take these out. Um, really, the, the tenons themselves, the wedges, are going to be um, what you're taking out in the field. I think just for ease of building, these small screws are a little, are a little tough. I am going to drop one of these wedges in here. At least I thought I was. So now my barrel is fully attached to my stock. It can't get away, which is good. Something I want to mention too as we're doing this, we're going to thin up all of this. So I'm going to thin up the area here that contacts with the barrel. We're going to match it up here to our, our nose cap and our entry pipe for a ramrod. This is going to be a lot of wood removal, just like we did um, back at the butt stock. So I'm going to start with my large flat file here. Just start working. So they're all ready. Got a lot of that wood taken care of, nice and simply, without much pain. See, we are indexing with our plate here. We got it nice and cleaned up now. Um, I'm going to have to come back in and, and with a smaller file up in here, blend this space a little bit, which is fine. I need to work on it anyway. And as I'm getting up here to the barrel, I'm wrapping my file around. I don't want to contact the barrel any. I don't want to mess up the nice lines that it comes with from the factory. But I want to start adjusting this wood 
so that we have a nice curve around connecting with that barrel. That will help give us the illusion that the wood is thinner than it is, make it a little more artful, a little more ornate, and give us the feel that we're going for. So I'll pop it out of the vise here so you can see a little bit of that difference. This is the side that we've worked, and this is the side as it comes from the factory. We've taken this down quite a bit, and uh, once I get close to the finishing stage, I'll come in and round this just a touch uh, to further push that illusion. But you can see that we've made a lot of good progress here, really easy progress. This doesn't really take much work. Um, it's even easier, I would say, than working the buttstock. So you can see here we have a little bit of a bump right there. We're going to come back through a little later and, uh, and clean that up off camera. So I'm going to shift this back a bit. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to pop out our wedge and uh, we'll clean up this front end and start working around our nose cap area. This nose cap up here becomes more and more important for us. Um, I'd like to make, make it as so I can, <clears throat> I like to make the profile of the forestock try to match that nose cap so we have a nice even uh, surface all the way up the stock here. Uh, so I'm starting to contact up here. And when I'm doing that, I'm going to hold off now on really doing anything with the top of this four stock. We're now matching pretty well with this plate here. A little bit right there I can take off. Uh, so I'm going to shift now to working around our entry pipe and uh, in the bottom of our four stock here. Kind of blending the work that we've been doing with these other faces. As I come up to this curve here, where we have our entry pipe, I shift. Actually, while we have that clamped, we're gonna put that tenon back in there. Just so we have that support. Those are tricky. like how tight that is, but we're gonna work on that. As I come up here and we start to have this curve, I'm switching to a half round file so I can navigate that bump with relative ease. Because this is set in kind of low, our stock kind of gets thinner as we get out here to the front. I want to make sure that I have a gradual change in size from the four, the kind of the lock end of the four stock here, all the way up to where our entry pipe and our nose cap are. I don't want it to be flat and then dip, you know, the last two inches here. So I'm going to expand my file strokes a bit so that we have a nice even transition. Feels pretty smooth going into it. I have a little bit of roughness back in the four stock, but um, feeling pretty good about this area up here. These are held in with pins, so we'll be a little careful, a little more careful uh, as we're removing those. But um, I'm liking, liking where that's at.
Right now my top face out here on the right hand side is getting pretty close to even. We have just a little bit more thickness out here we need to take out. It gets better once we get up closer to our nose cap. You'll see here we still have a lot of thickness coming back here to um, kind of our side or our, our mortises and things. And I really need to clean that up a lot in there. Um, so I'm going to focus on coming in here and, and cleaning up around here around these mortises and getting them thinned out. Uh, to do that I'm going to switch over to some half round files so that I can work around this side plate mortise here as well as my lock plate mortise over here. Another thing to show you as I rotate this in the light you can kind of see those facets that we've left from our filing. So we've got some right here and you can kind of see as I lay this on its side, we have a little bit of a hump right in here. Which makes sense. We haven't been able to work this area much uh, because of these lock mortises. And I've already dinged this a little bit, so I don't want to ding that anymore. But I'm using my fingers, kind of going around this underside here, and looking and marking any harsh angles that I feel. Something that's hard to beat when you're working um, with hand tools and files and things like this is the amount of noise and the amount of dust. I mean, you can see on my area here and below the vise, there's a lot of, of wood dust coming off of this as I'm filing and sanding. But reality though, it, it, it's not coming up into the air. It's all falling, which is nice. I don't need to wear any protective equipment really. Um, except for eye protection, you know, I've, I've got my I've got my glasses on. But if I was to come in here with an oscillating sander or something or a Dremel, all that dust would be up in the air. I'd be coughing and hacking. It's nice, I think, to slow down and and work like this. I mean, it's early morning here as I'm working in the shop in the woods. It's nice and quiet. And uh, I'm not really spoiling any of that serene morning, I guess, is how I think about it. But, you know, to do that, you do have to have a lot of tools. You know, so not knocking anybody who is using a power tool or anything on one of these kits. I think it's, it's about building the kit and making it what you want it to be, more so than building it how you think or how somebody else thinks you should build it. I'm just using this rat tail rasp to come in along this curve, trying to establish a little bit more of a, of a harder line here, as well as taking down the top part of our stock here as it folds into our barrel. I'm okay with this being a little thicker back here, um, thicker than we have set up out here, um, just because we have a, a th you know, thick around the lock and then it's going to taper and get a little bit thinner. So I'm just using that rat tail coming around. With my rasp, I'm staying clear of that plate. I don't want to ding any of my teeth. And I want to use this rasp to quickly balance this out and blend it together. Okay. I'm going to switch over to this side. I'm using that rasp with the half round side down and I'm just riding so that my edge here lines up kind of with my edge of the side plate mortise as I'm coming around. So I'm using the left half really of this half round. Coming around here, just 
blending all of this together. That's pretty coarse. Not too worried about it though. Be a lot of cleanup on this. It's just going to be the nature of the kit, of the beast, of the process. Okay, so now I'm looking at it from the barrel side and comparing the width of my stock on the lock side to the lock plate side. And we need to do a lot more blending into this barrel here. So I'm going to focus my strokes, draw kind of a center line, on this half of our stock to start balancing this out. I'm pretty, I'm comfortable with this. We have a couple facets here on this underside, but I'm going to come through after I get this established and we'll come over and, and clean up this underside and then focus on our nose cap and entry pipe. And this is just how I'm working it. You know, you don't have to go in this order. Um, or do everything that I've been doing by any means. I kind of get it like that. Just so you can see it too. Here's how I have that set. So I have my nose cap up here resting. My barrel also resting. Still have my tenon wedge in here to keep all of this together. And I'm clamped around my mortise back here. Up here at our at the front end of our stock here, you'll see we have our entry pipe and we have our nose cap. Now, um, these aren't held together like anything else on this kit. So our, our trigger guard is held in with a couple screws. Our plates here are held in with a couple screws. Um, these are held in with a couple traditional pins. One here, one here, and one here. Now. I don't, this is, these are two separate pieces, our entry pipe and our nose cap. So we need, what we need to do to work on and finish out kind of our, our nose cap here is we need to knock out our entry pipe. We have it pretty close um, in here as far as fitting, especially back here. Up here, we're just going to clean up this differentiating color that you can see there in the stock. Um, and we can do that when we're cleaning up and matching to the underside of our nose cap. Right now, we can't get to that area easily without messing up our, no our, our entry pipe here. And you'll see our entry pipe has a couple cast um, bands in it here. We want to preserve um, and use those to guide our filing as we go towards metal cleanup. So on the rest of this kit, everything goes, um, fr the, the tenons, I guess I should say, the tenons go from right to left. And I'm going to assume that the pins were designed to be put in that way as well. So when you're dealing with pins on a muzzleloader stock like this, it's important that you always put them in the same way and take them out the same way. That's, to explain that a little bit further, our tenon wedges, like the instructions said, were designed to go in from the right to the left, and they're going to come out from the left to the right. And we want to do that same thing on these pins. If we don't, we risk uh, splitting our stock or having the pins run out and creating a new hole, uh, which we don't need at the moment. Now, if that does happen, I will happily show you how we can repair that, but I'm going to hope that it doesn't. So I'm going to flip this over here to this side, pretty much the way we had it, and lock it up in our vise. To remove these, I'm going to use a set of drive pin punches here. This is an antique set that's been around for quite a while. Um, there you can see what they look like. You can get a modern set like this from Harbor Freight or a hardware store um, pretty easily. And um, they usually match up okay um, with some of these pins. So we're going to try this out. Um, very gently, we're going to try this out. I like to try to get a, a punch that is a little smaller, if I can, than the pin. I'm tapping pretty gently. I'm going to flip it over so you can see how that's going for us. Okay, and we have a little bit of a split out there. Okay, so hmm, maybe we try going the other way. I mean, it's, it's my own fault here. I'm, I'm not upset about it. That's, that's a bummer. But like I said, you know, we can sh I can show you how we can correct this. But the pins were put in the opposite way um, as our tenons are designed to go in. Now we're going to do a couple things to these pins. to help prevent this though if you can see here so this is the side that was on our side plate side 
And so when pins, I mean, it, it's not, in, you know, about this kit, it's about just pin stock in general, and, and even when you make pins on your own. You can see here that we have a bit of a burr around that where that was cut off on both of these. And so when I admittedly put it through the wrong way, you know, the way that it didn't want to go, that burr caught the wood grain on the, on the one side there and, uh, and pushed it out. Simple physics. So what we're going to do with these pins is I'm going to set that pin in my little parts bin. And I'm going to grab my file here. And I'm just going to go around this pin with my file. I'm going to bevel that edge. And I'm going to get rid of any burrs that are on there. And I can test that just by feeling. So we have a nice rounded tip now. Kind of see on that pin. I'm going to do the same to this other side. Just till we get a nice shiny face between the end and the shaft. Now that won't prevent any more pin damage, you know, as we as we put these pins in and out, but it will help. And now that we know, we know. So don't sweat it if this happens. I'm going to show you how we can just clean that up. If it's a big split, you'll want to save the splinters. And a lot of times you can super glue them back in. Kind of learned that from Mike Brooks and Wayne Estes. So we'll survey our splits and a little bit later. With our pins out now, I can gently grab my entry pipe, pop it out. So there you can see both of our pins go through these lugs here, which are drilled to accept those pins. Something else we can do to help ourselves as we're cleaning up our metal is we're going to come in here with our file on the side face of each of these lugs. We're going to clean up those little burrs there. This is totally normal, um, you know, especially if you're building from just parts. You're going to have casting gates, you're going to have burrs and things. Don't sweat it. Be careful as you're working on things and you'll be fine. You can see how that fits in there. I don't really want to remove much wood off of, or <laughs> much material on this as we clean it up from the sides or anything. So we're just going to pop this out. We're going to set it in our parts bin over here. I'm going to put away my buddy there. I'm going to set it off to the side. Um, alternatively, you know, a small nail um, that is, again, smaller diameter would work fine. Um, to get those out but I really encourage you if you have a shop or a garage or something that you know you like to work on things it doesn't cost much to get a set of those um, from your hardware store. Now as we plan on working this I, I want to be careful because this wood out here is very thin meaning it's very weak so we want to be gentle as we're filing to get this all together and, and mesh our stock to our nose cap here. From this angle you can kind of see the difference in material that we have there don't have a lot to take off, so we're just going to treat it like we did everything else. We're going to remove enough wood until our wood matches with our hardware. To do that, I'm going to come in again with my large flat file here. I'm going to focus on this side first. I'm going to put in my block back here so I have a little bit of resistance. And I'm running this at a diagonal from my stock, and I'm bringing it up and around as I'm stroking. That way we reduce the flats that we need to take out at the end, and we get more coverage. Now, as that curve back here becomes more important, more and more important, I should say, I can get out my half round file here. And that way I can ride that curve. I'm getting less contact with the stock by using that half round. But I think it's I think it's the right choice. At least it is for me. If you feel differently, you know, you can do it differently. So we're just working this slow and steady. I like this this part of uh, 
of kit building especially. I like it when the, uh, the kit has a little roughness to it like this one does, a little extra wood. I mean, finally, I, I imagine after watching the series, probably looks a little monotonous, and it may have convinced many of you to buy the finished, the finished piece, but uh, there's something just really nice about it, really peaceful. Switching back over to my flat side, noticed I was getting a little bit of a hump. I don't want that, so I'm using this flat to get more contact. And get a, a more finished stroke out of this. That makes sense. So the right side now we've matched, and you can't really even see the wood behind the nose cap. Um, as you're looking at it, and we have a nice smooth transition there. I've said it before, and I'll, and I'll repeat it again. Uh, I think that is the the real mark on if you want to finish your kit out well. It, it's it's really to to mate your wood and your hardware. Like I said, you can put it all together as it comes and go out into the woods with these shape differences. But I think you'll be happier in the long run if you put it together and, and mate this stuff so that it's nice and even. I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing on our other side. I'm not really shifting position any. I'll come back over and, and clean more of this up, but it's comfortable enough for me at this point that I can get it from where I'm standing without shifting things around. Okay, just a little bit of work. Let's see how sleek that makes that. Just. just amps it up, boy. That's what you want. You want that to get nice. Nice and even. Nice and matched up. So what we can do now is we can Drop our entry pipe back in there. See, we're looking pretty good, I think. A little bit of extra wood right in there. And I'm just holding that in. I could put my pins back in. I'm kind of letting gravity do the work there. It's been a lot of shaping. Again, I, I appreciate you sticking around. And I hope you've enjoyed the series so far. I was coming in here with a file, just trying to get rid of some of those burrs that we have left over from that initial inletting at the factory. I can also come in like so. Clean those up. Come in from the top. Get those out of there. And sandpaper too would work well getting rid of some of those burrs. You know if you're going for an ultra traditional build where you're only using the tools that the Hawken brothers may have had, you know, you're not going to use sandpaper. They didn't have it. That's a really modern take on things. I've seen some people claim that you know, you could uh, they could have used shark skin or something like that. I haven't personally seen any any documentation to that effect, but you know, I'm always willing to learn. Um, so really a good file is is what they had and what they used. Um, so let's go back up here to our bumble, our bungle. Flip this around, tap that in a bit. We're gonna have to take those down a little bit. They're pretty tight. Um, so I'm gonna wet this a little bit. So when I wet this, I don't really see much. 
on our pin brake. Get you where you can see that. But we do have uh, just some gnarliness in there. And because that's our pin, I'm not really too worried about it. It's not like here where we need to mate this to some hardware. So I'm just going to take kind of a, a fine file and just come in here and work on that. And I'm going to work around that area. I'm not just working that specific area because I want that to blend. Now I'm not saying we're going to totally get rid of that. You know, that'll be our little goof on this kit. But you're going to have. Don't sweat it. You know, I'm going to get to, I'll get a few comments about that, but you know, I'm not too worried about it. So we're going to take a moment here, bring you out. Let's look at the kit all together. So at this point, I've done a lot of work and it's, I think it's time to kind of do an overview pass uh, with my fingers here and kind of feel for any areas that I think need some work. One thing I want to make sure that I do is I'm going to take the barrel out and I'm going to round off this upper edge a bit. Right now, it's a harsh line and I've got some burrs there just by the nature of our filing. So that's one thing I'm going to take care of. I'm just going to kind of make a to-do list marking on the stock here. Right along here you can see, even in the camera, which is saying something, that I have a, a couple faces in there. So I want to mark that. I'm going to put CU just for some cleanup on those facets and faces. A little bit in here. And by marking with the pencil in that area, I'm just marking what I want to remove. I need to come in here, back in here and clean up some. Really need to clean up up in here. I'm going to rotate this around. My pencil lines are going to smudge some. I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. Um, this isn't rocket science. Where that smudge is, I'm going to know I need to do some work. In here, I've got a bump. I can see it and I can feel it a little bit I'll clean up to do there come back here touch I've got some rasp some file marks there I want to clean up um, which is fine overall I can feel that my lock mortise side drops off faster so that's going to work well for me to come in there and clean that up. Just going to bring that forward some. Back in here, not very even here and here with how that meshes out. So I want to break that edge a little bit there. That's not going to be perfectly accurate to the originals. Um, it's okay. I want to break that a little early. You can see from the top down that my, let's bring you in so you can really see it. My lock plate mortise here is much more defined than it is over here. So I could take down some more here. You can see I've got a flat edge there. So I can accent that a little bit more, get it a little closer to even. Um, I can break that edge some, clean that up. And this is really what this is all about, is just coming through and marking up and going through and doing some cleanup. I have a little bit of a hump right there. I want to clean up and get that a little straighter. We haven't concaved this cheek piece any, and, and that's really up to you. Right now I feel like it's pretty comfortable for my cheek, uh, so I wouldn't be adverse you know I wouldn't I wouldn't feel bad going ahead and finishing this out and and prepping this for stain and finish but um, something that I can do is I can put my sights in test out my sights in the stock or in the barrel I mean and I can hold and I can then configure this cheek piece so that it matches my cheek um, and and make it fit for me I've, I have pretty shallow cheeks uh, so I don't need a whole lot taken out but by putting the sights in and siding down this I can adjust this to really match this to me and that's another way to personalize your muzzleloader to you is to come in here and you know kind of 
this area here and clean that out. And that'll match the originals a lot more. A lot of these come in like that, you know, and kind of drop off and, you know, really match the shooter's cheek. I imagine that was, to get it to match you from the shop was probably more of a custom purchase, um, but maybe not. Got some lines there. So you can see we have a little bit more work cut out for us. Um, but again, this is the kind of fit and finish on this. And as we continue this, we're going to get closer and closer and have a nicer and nicer looking kit. With that done, I will say we do have a little bit more stock shaping uh, left in the next video or so. I'm just kind of finishing up this this area of it. I know this has been a long haul, uh, and I, I, I'm i sorry that it's been so long, but I really wanted to show as much of this process as I could. Uh, as always, feel free to skip around in the videos to find the areas that you are looking for for your particular kit. I'm trying to timestamp as much as I can here for the different areas, um, but I, I'm hoping that at least in the long video, there's a lot of uh, information in here as to how I'm doing it. Uh, again, as always, if you do something different or you know somebody who does something different, uh, please let me know in the comments or shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to learn from all of you out there just as much as I hope that uh, you are learning from this series and the other folks out here online that are sharing their love of muzzleloading. I promise that we're getting there on this kit. We're really close to getting to the metal finish and uh, that'll be a quick, you know, maybe one or two videos uh, on as far as the metal finish goes and then we'll start beelining right into the staining and uh, start getting to maybe some of that faux striping that we were talking about. Really been doing some research on that, really excited about it and I hope that we can apply it appropriately to this kit. Once again, I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, again, feel free to leave them in the comments or shoot me an email at ilovemuzzleloading at gmail.com. We're also posting blog articles uh, with more detailed pictures to go along with the videos at ilovemuzzleloading.com. Uh, you can search for Gemmer Hawken kit there if it's not uh, on the homepage, and then you can kind of go through it slowly on your own. So once again, I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.